Right, hello everyone. Hopefully this should now work. Now I am um I'm working at a really, really weird angle at the moment. Basically, we're just gonna use the one camera. So I've set my um my iPad up. So hopefully this should now work and stay alive. Oh my word, what a nightmare of a day we are having. Now I am working at a really, really unusual angle. <laughs> to show you which is probably not going to do my back the power of good but you know we'll just try and get through it for you all so um look you can see my hands move this time this is what i was doing last time and you couldn't see whereas at least you can <laughs> you can see them this time so um we're gonna get started we're gonna be using um all the different the different products that i told you about earlier um, we're going to be getting we're going to be using those so we're going to start off by doing our background now what I've done already is I have cut down all of my mats and layers okay now you may already um if you've been onto the blog so if you go on to Chloe's creative cards uk scroll down to the very bottom click on blog and then go on to um stamp along number 18 I think we're on now um, if you click on that, you will be able to download a free instruction sheet as to how to make this project, okay? I am slightly concerned that the feed has just frozen again. I'm not going to lie, I'm getting a little bit worried. Okay, so please do. If you can still, if you've still got movement on your screen, can you let me know? Because I think it's keeping intermittently freezing. Okay, so I'm going to start off with my lovely square of white card, okay, which I've pre-cut down to size. Again, the measurements are all on the blog and they're all on your free download instruction sheet as well, okay? So you'll be able to create this fabulous project following the step-by-step -step instructions and I'm going to show you how to make it now as well, hopefully. Okay then, so I'm going to start off by taking a little anti-static bag, okay, and I'm going to give my card a good dust over. Okay, just using my little anti-static bag. So this is the crystal white card that I'm stamping onto first. Okay, and then I'm going to take my snowfall background stamp, which is this one here. Okay, so this is a really nice large stamp. You can see it's almost DL in size. It's fabulous. It's really good for creating backgrounds with. So we're going to take our stamp and we're going to ink it up using a clear embossing ink pad. Okay, which is this one here. So we're going to ink up our stamp like so. So lots and lots of tapping all over the image. Okay, we're going to ink this up. Right, so you want to make sure you've got plenty of ink on there. Okay, and then what we're going to do is take this and we're going to stamp it down onto our card. So I'm going to go slightly off each of the edges because the stamp's slightly larger than the card that I'm stamping onto. And I'm going to stamp this down. Now I do prefer when I'm using a really large stamp like this one, I do like to stand up when I stamp, okay? I just find it a little bit easier for getting a bit more pressure onto the stamp. Okay, we're gonna lift that away and then we're gonna grab some scrap paper. So we've just got a sheet over here. Slide that underneath and we're gonna take some metallic silver super fine embossing powder. Okay, we're gonna tap that over the image like so okay and then we're going to heat that up oops so to do that we're going to put that embossing powder back into the jar and then we're going to heat this up using our heat gun so we're going to pop my heat gun's got two speeds so as usual i'm going to pop it on the highest speed setting okay and then we're just going to heat this up now because i've actually dyed up the matching layers if I hold this up really closely to the camera, you'll be able to see this in two seconds till I've heated it. there we go so you can see how we've got that all nicely heated there in the background okay now if i hold that up really really closely to the camera 
Can you see how at the very edge there, it's just missed a tiny bit with the stamp? Now the reason for that is, is because when you die cut a shape, it basically creates like a little indent around the edge and that happens with any die. So what you can do to avoid missing that little bit off is you can either pop a little bit more pressure on your stamp or what you can also do is, um, I've forgotten what I was going to say there, is what we're going to do, sorry, is we're going to glitter around the edge anyway so it doesn't matter, okay, you're not really going to see that. So what I'm going to do now is stamp this again because it's a fully repeating pattern. So I'm going to line this up and stamp it down again, okay. So to do that, I'm going to, again, give it a little dust over with an anti-static bag, okay, like so. So just a little dust over and then we'll take our clear embossing ink pad. So I'm going to re-ink up my stamp. Sorry if you can't see this on camera, as I mentioned a little bit earlier, I'm having a bit of a techno technology nightmare today. So I'm working at a really, really weird angle, okay, so please do just bear with me. Okay, I'm going to stamp this down just to line it up and press. Okay, again, I'm hoping I've got that lined up correctly because I can't see all that well from the angle that I'm working at to show you. So please do, just bear with me a little bit today. Okay. So what I'm then going to do is cover that with my metallic silver super fine embossing powder again. Okay, so we're just going to take that and sprinkle it over. Like so, and then you can see how we've created a full snowflake background on there. Okay. So, we're going to quickly heat this up now. Right. So again, we're just going to hold the heat gun still. As soon as that embossing powder starts to melt and change, I'm just going to move the heat gun over the image. There we go. So then if I turn that round, you can see how we've got that lovely snowflake background there, okay, on the card. So what we're going to do next is we're going to take a chisel tip glue pen, okay, this is one of the new ones. Again, if you want to prime it and get more glue out, just pump it down a little bit. And then we're just going to drag that along each edge of the square. like so okay and then we're gonna i'm gonna grab another bit of scrap paper just give me two seconds and we're gonna take our glass slipper glitter okay and we'll sprinkle that over the edges like so so that's just going to create a really nice little glittery border just around the edge of the mats and layers there okay so what i've also done is i've pre-cut down my other mats and layers from the instruction sheet so i've got a piece of patterned paper okay and i've got some silver mirror card i've got a piece of the white crystal white pearl card i've got another piece of my mirror card and then i've got my stamped square to go on the top now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my white card layer and my patterned paper layer and we're going to pop a little bit of glitter around the edge of these. So to do that again, I'm just going to use my chisel tip glue pen. So this is the brand new one that's on the website. And we're just going to drag it along each edge of the foiled paper. Like so. And then we are going to take our glass slipper glitter and we're going to sprinkle this over the edges of the foiled paper. Like so. So that's then just going to create a really nice little glittery border just around the edge. Okay. And we're going to do exactly the same on the crystal white layer as well. So let me just pull that to one side. 
Okay, and then we're going to do exactly the same with this one. So what I do is, you can see on your chisel tip pen how you've got like the flatter end. So I put the flat end up against my card and then drag it towards me. So you can just work your way around. Like so, and if you hold it at about a 45 degree angle, okay, so it's not upright, you're resting your hand flat. And then you drag that pen towards you, you'll get a nice straight edge each and every time, okay? So what we'll then do is we'll take our lovely glass slipper glitter again and we'll sprinkle this over like so. Okay, and then what I'm gonna do is if I've got a little paintbrush to hand, which I have, Anywhere where I've just got a little bit of excess glitter there, I'm just going to dust off. That'll be where I've used my removable tape to tape my die in place. Okay, so we're going to pop that glitter back into the jar now. Like so. You can see how that's all nicely gone back in there. I'm going to pop that piece of paper out of the way. Pop the other one in and we'll do a little bit of embossing. So what we've got is we've got our lovely winter flower stamp and die set. So for this particular project, you are going to need, let me just double check on this one. Just give me two seconds. I can't remember if it's four large or two. Let me just double check. I don't want to be giving you the wrong information. <laughs> oh, a quick look. Right, so we want four la uh, two large, sorry, and eight medium of the flower. So we're going to use the new winter flower stamp. So it comes like this, okay? So you get your stamps and dies within this set. And this is such a lovely, lovely design. I'm going to take the small one off my block because we're not going to use that one. Okay, then what we're going to do is, if I hold this up to the camera really closely, can you see how there's a little notch on the polymer? On the stamp there we go okay that little notch corresponds with the notch on the die so then you know which petal lines up with which petal on the die so we'll pop our two stamps onto our block like so okay and then we're going to take some crystal white pearl paper we're going to give this a good dust with an anti-static bag And then we're going to take our stamp, okay, and we're going to ink this up using a clear embossing ink pad. So, we're going to use, again, the Wow Clear Embossing Ink Pad. So, we're going to ink this up. We've got lots and lots of tapping all over the image. And then we're going to place this down onto our pearl paper. So that's going to get us a medium and a large one and we'll cover that with the metallic silver super fine embossing powder. So we'll just sprinkle that over like so. Okay and then I'm not going to heat that quite yet, we'll do another one of these. So, oops, re-inking again as we emboss. So just re-inking with my clear embossing ink pad and then I'm going to place my stamp down and press like so and then we're going to lift that off and we're going to cover this with our metallic silver super fine embossing powder so we're just going to sprinkle that over pop that back into the jar and we're at a point now where we can heat this up now you can see i've got some little inky fingerprints on my card here so if i just grab my little paintbrush sorry i'm working so kind of do you want to just get used to you all your things being around you i'm working such the wrong way around today but never mind right we're going to heat these up now so we're going to use our heat gun again if you've got two speeds i always just go in on the highest i have no patience for 
heating things up. So we'll just pop the heat gun over those. And you can see how quickly that it then starts to turn on the paper as well. I was just like to do my little tilt just to make sure I've kind of caught them all um, in the in the light as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little arrow, I've got a pen, just so I know that up, that's the way that my little um, notches are pointing, just so then when it comes to me kind of lining it up, it's going to make it a little bit easier for me lining the stamp up in the die. So what we're going to do now is ink up our stamp again and i'm just using the medium flower this time so how many did we say i needed again sorry so we've got two large and we need eight medium so we've got two done so we need to do another six so i'm going to stamp one down here it's one i'm going to re-ink stamp another it's two and we can get let's cover those with some embossing powder first what I like to do, I like to stamp like a full sheet of flowers and then get them all nicely dyed out. You can see where I've been holding onto my card with my inky fingers. You're not going to stress about that though, it's fine. Still just go in with a little paintbrush. You can see as well if it's kind of, because the wow powders are obviously treated for static flow, if it's clinging, you know it's because you've got ink on there. You can see that I've got a big bit of ink on there, but never mind. Right, we'll heat that up again. So all we're doing is holding our heat gun still, and then we're just moving it over the image. That's that one. Okay, so we're just going to keep going. Again, get plenty of anti-static on there. That'll help with the fingerprint. Re-ink our stamp. Let's just see where that little notch is. That's one there. Two. Just for I'm re-inking every single time as well. That's three. And then that's one more up there. So we're going to lift that away. Okay, and then we're going to cover this with our metallic silver super fine embossing powder. So we're going to sprinkle that over, top off the excess. It's going to go back into the jar. Get rid of that. Okay, and then we're just going to heat this up. Okay. So all I'm going to do is just hold my heat gun still and then as soon as that embossing powder starts to melt and change we're just going to move the heat gun over the image. So you can see how that's working there now okay so what we're going to do i can see your comments about the feed starting to become blurred i'm really sorry but i've got absolutely no control over that one i'm afraid and um, so I'm, I'm doing my best here we're just gonna have to kind of um just keep going as well as we can okay right then so what we're going to do now is we're going to take our dies that correspond with the stamps Okay, so I always like to kind of roughly trim round as well with these. Right, so I'm going to grab our winter flower die and we're going to place these over the top and I'm just going to start to cut these out. So I'm going to use my Gemini machine, so I will have to turn round just to cut these out. Okay, and we're going to use... Um, just a little bit of low tack tape just to hold these in place like so so let's just get that into position once we're happy we can take a little bit of tape 
Now what I tend to always do as well is when I'm taping my dies into place is I like to just put the tape on the very edges. I try not to get too much on the embossing because what you can sometimes find is if your tape's particularly tacky, you can sometimes find that it can um, peel your embossing off a little bit. So I tend to just put a little bit just on the edges. I always put two pieces on though just to make sure it's well held in place. Then I'm just going to quickly run that through my Gemini. Okay, so we're just going to run this through like so. And then as soon as that's part the other side, I should be using my junior flakes really, shouldn't I? Would make more sense. So I'll see if I've got those in the drawer here. Okay. We're going through a bit quicker then, aren't we? Right then. So we're going to push this one through. And then we'll do the next one here as well. So that's going to go to there. Just line that up. And you can see the stamp and die set is gorgeous because it cuts right to the very middle of the flower. So what that means is when you come to shape it, these, it makes it so much easier. Okay. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take our Gemini plates again and just run this through. I'm just going to use my junior plates now because it's just going to go through my Gemini a little bit quicker and we're all about speed. Okay. I always panic though in case my plates go flying off the edge because my Gemini is like under a set of drawers. So you can see how that one's cut out. So we'll just keep working round. Die cutting these out, okay? And it's such an, these are so nice and easy to kind of line up now. Just the whole system with the little putting the notch in and all of that, it really does make it so much easier for you all at home. So what I'm gonna do is just keep die cutting these out. Okay, so we are literally going from start to finish today. All I'd pre-done before the stamp along was I'd just um, cut my mats and layers down. That was all that I've done. Okay. I'm getting in a right knot here with my tape. I feel all flustered. <laughs> Right, so that's going to go there, and then we're going to put a little bit more, oops, getting stuck to everything now as well, a little bit more tape at the top there. So the plate combination that I personally use for my Gemini is I just use my base plate, my plastic shim and then my cutting plate on the top, um, because I tend to find anything more than that in my Gemini personally is a little bit too much. If you find that your dies aren't cutting, you can add your metal shim in or your magnet in. But seriously, get to know your Gemini machine because some of them have quite a strong pressure. And what you'll find is when you're putting things like this out, you just don't need that much pressure. We were only cutting through paper or cards. So, okay, so I'm just going to continue lining these up. I'm sorry, I, I'm having to bring these a little bit closer to me just so I can kind of see for lining them up. Okay, so that's that one there. There. One more here. Right, so we've just got that all built up. I'm going to run that through the machine again. So I'm just using my plate. But you can see how easy this is to create these flowers. By just using the dies and the stamps in this, it's so, so much easier. Okay. So then, I'm going to pop that one there. And pop that one there. Use our die again. Okay, so pop this under here. So again, just to line up, all I'm doing is just popping the die over the top, popping it into place, and just popping a little bit of tape either side, like so. And like I say, I don't tend to tape like across the middle of the flower or anything like that, because what I can find is if your low tack's a little bit tacky, it can sort of lift your embossing powder. And again, that's the same with your plate combination as well. The more pressure that you're putting on the paper or on the card as you're running through the machine, especially when it's being embossed, what you can find is make your embossing powder crack. So if you're finding that, just reduce one of the plates in your die cutting sandwich. So we'll get that one lined up there, a little bit of tape onto there, right so 
I'm going to just keep working this through like so. Okay, so for anyone who missed the start of the video today, I was just explaining how we've got new products launching on Monday on the website, so it's the Concepta Collection. But if you've got Box Kit 7, you'll have seen a little sneak peek too. Um, so they will all be launching on the website on Monday. So I'm going to do an additional Facebook Live on Monday afternoon at 2 o'clock okay where i'm going to walk you through all of the brand new collection okay and i'm going to show you um some ideas of how to use it and some finished samples and then what we'll do is on wednesday instead of having a stamp along next week we'll do a bit of like a see this is what happens when i talk and try and do things <laughs> Um, we'll have a little bit of like a crafty like a crafty session so basically i'll give you loads of ideas as to how to use all of the new products and then the week after we'll go back to a, a stamp along again okay which i have actually got all prepared so that week we will be stenciling okay so get this taped into place right and then we're going to run that through our machine sorry we've got one more to cut out after this one Okay, and then we are going to get a little bit of sparklicious on there. So, we're going to just run this through our die cutting machine again. So, I'm just working my way through, die cutting all of these out, okay, like so. So, I'm going to take, oh, take that one out. The next one. So I'd like to know, has everyone made their Christmas cards yet? Are you still on making them? Like me, have you not really started making them yet? I'd be interested to know. Right, so I'm going to pop that on there. Flip that over. And then I'm going to run that through the Gemini again. Okay, so I noticed that so many of you have been loving this stamp and die as well in the Facebook group. Um, some of the makes have been amazing and lots of you have been using this just like kind of uh, all year round as well. Lots and lots of different, um, lots and lots of different projects just by changing the colour up on this one as well. Okay, so we've got two large and we've got eight medium of the flowers okay so what we're going to do now is we're just going to curl the petals and give these a little bit of shape so to do that all i'm going to do is i'm just going to curl these between my finger and thumb so i'm going to pop this what i like to do is just hold hold it in the middle and then just curl like this now what you can find is some of your embossing powder might come off when you curl that is completely normal okay please do not stress if that happens to you at home it's just where you're kind of bending and manipulating the paper it can just cause it to crack a little bit which is fine we don't stress about that okay so we're going to do this on all of the layers if you find it easier as well if you've got like a pen or a pencil or something like that you can take that and just wrap wrap the petals around sometimes it makes it a little bit easier what i also like to do as well is let me have a little look in my toolbox here I've got like an embossing tool here and sometimes what I do is just give them a little squish in the middle as well. And that just gives them that little bit more dimension just by pressing on the centre of the flower there too. It just helps the little um, petals to lift. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to just keep curling all the petals as well. You know, if you're looking for inspiration as well for your all of your Christmas cards and projects, hop on over to the website chloe'screativecards.co.uk and what we're going to be doing is we're going to be um we've got loads and loads of projects coming up on the blog so if you haven't already signed up to our email newsletter okay and we will be sending out lots and lots of different projects and um, using loads of the different christmas products so glynis has written some projects becca has as well so there's going to be loads and loads going onto the website okay so I'm just going to curl these petals like so between my finger and thumb. Okay. And then we're going to go in and we're going to start to add some glue on uh, some glue and glitter onto these. So I'm just going to use my dry clear PVA. 
I'm going to put some tiny little dots under here like so and then we are going to take our starfall sparklicious glitter and we're going to sprinkle this over the top okay you can see this has got like tiny little stars but it just adds a really really pretty effect onto the flowers okay that's that one so we're going to do this on all of the flowers so that was a little bit too much glue but never mind tiny little dots of glue and sprinkle with your glitter and tap away the excess okay the smaller the dots of glue you put on as well the smaller amount of glitter will obviously cling the more glue you put on the more glitter you are going to get on there okay so just keep sprinkling this over So we're just going to keep working around, adding these tiny little dots. Under there like so. Okay, I'm going to put back a little bit into the jar just so then it makes it a little bit easier for me to sprinkle it over. always happens with these colours as well you see they end up with more when you tip them out of the jar than when you go to put it back in they just expand don't they we really do jam pack these little jars <laughs> for all you think it might have um settled a little bit because that does happen with glitter it can settle in the jar when you reawaken it my word there is plenty in there okay so i'm just going to keep going popping tiny little bits of glue just under here, like so. Okay, so we've got a little bit of glitter onto all of these beautiful, beautiful flowers. And do you know what this technique that I'm showing you today? Yes, we're using this on the winter flower today, but if you wanted to use it on the, say, the Christmas rose or something like that, you could definitely still be using this technique and make sim a similar project, but just by changing the flowers up on it. that one and then we'll do this one here there we go okay so then we're going to sprinkle that over tap off the excess and you can see how we've just got that little bit of glitter going on there okay what we're then going to do is we're going to put this back into the jar again but we're going to attempt to it doesn't ever seem to kind of go properly back in does it like magic i think it's safe to say we do pack these little pots very very full <gasps> okay right i'm gonna put the lid on there what i have is i have like a little pot with which i put all my scraps and leftovers in so i'm gonna put that excess back into there and then that ends up like your own little mix okay so i'll get that bit off the desk later okay then so what we're going to do next is we are going to take some heat resistant acetate which i've actually got over here so let me just grab that in okay and what we're going to do is start off with an anti-static bag you want to make sure you've got plenty anti-static on there Okay, and then we're going to get stamping. So we are going to need, how many of these? We're going to need four of the medium and one large winter flower. Okay, so again, I'm so sorry, but I'm working at such a weird angle. I'm doing my best to show you what I'm doing here. It's just a bit of a strange one for my back as well, to be honest. Right, it's that one. on there, on there, 
and then we are going to do a large one as well. So this is under the heat resistant acetate. I'm not too worried about which way. I think I might smudge that, but we'll see. Might be all right. Oops. I'm not too worried either about which way up I'm stamping these. Because it's on heat resistant acetate, we're going to put it out with scissors anyway. So that doesn't matter too much. Okay. So we'll sprinkle this over with some embossing powder. You can see I've got a lovely fingerprint from one of them there. We won't stress about that. We will just take a paintbrush and carefully brush away any excess, like so. Okay, and then we're going to heat those up. So it's going to go back into the jar. While that goes in, we're going to heat this up. Okay. Right, so what we're going to do now is we're just going to use some scissors to trim these out. Scissors that I'm using today, these are just Fiskars ones. I do, I prefer my tonic spring cut scissors, but I've left them at work. So we'll use the tonic one, these Fiskars ones today. I'm just going to quickly trim around the edge. Again, because this is heat resistant acetate, you do not need to be too careful. You can just trim away. Okay, I'm just cutting as close as I can get really to the embossed line. And then what I'm going to do is take my scissors and just cut between the petals to the centre of the flower. Okay, so that's that one. And then we are going to continue heating this, uh, keeping going with this one, sorry. working my way around with my scissors like so and then cut into the middle I'm going to cut the last two out now okay Go really, really quiet when I'm putting out. So I'm going to put this larger one out now. And I do think by adding the acetate layer on the top of the flowers, it just adds something to your projects. It always looks really, really pretty. And I'm going to do this one as well. Anything that I'm using as well, it will be on the website. If you hop over to the blog post that I mentioned about earlier for Stamp Along Project 18, literally everything that we sell that we're using in the Stamp Along, I always link the product. So in the actual blog post itself where it tells you what you need, 
you'll just be able to click on the product and it'll take you to it on the website okay just in case anyone's wondering because we've noticed and we've got a couple of stock questions in the comments okay so what we're going to do now is we're going to start and build our flowers up so i treated myself to a brand new tube of kalal today so if i can get the seal off there we go we are going to be away so we're going to take our flowers and we're basically just going to stick two layers together now what you'll find is this will look lovely when you do it but it looks even better when it's dry because it gives you that little bit of time to be able to kind of play with the flowers a little bit and play and manipulate the petals okay so this is the first one so we're going to pop that down onto here so what i'm doing is i'm lining them up like directly on top of each other and because we're using that collal 3d glue that gives you the chance to be able to squish the, squish them just to give them that little bit of shape so you can see that there how i've just stuck two together and then i'm going to take my larger acetate layer and i'm literally just bending the petals up towards me like that and i'm going to give them that little squish in the middle like this okay and then i'm gonna add a blob of glue gel into the middle of there and we're gonna line this up again so i think it goes that way that's about right yes it does it's gonna go under there and then what i like to do is i like to like squish the glue gel in the middle and it makes the acetate layer then stand up okay so that's that one done so I'm going to pop that to one side and we're going to come back and add a little bit more glitter and thing onto there. But these are like, the, the, this is the basis of how we do it. So I'm going to just do this with all of the flowers. So I've already curled the petals. So all I'm doing is pulling them up towards me. And then we're going to line them up. So it goes that way, I think. Getting good at this. It goes that way. Give that a little squish in the middle so it makes those lovely petals stand up. Then we'll take our acetate layer and we're going to pull the, the top layer of the petals up. Now when you are stamping and embossing onto acetate, I should have mentioned this earlier, it is really important that you use heat resistant acetate. Because if you don't, the plastic, like it's, it, acetate is a plastic. So what you'll find is if you don't use the heat resistant version, your acetate will melt. Okay, that's that one there. So next one done. So I'm gonna just work round, adding these onto here. So that one's gonna go onto there. So and then we're gonna use our acetate again, pulling all those petals up towards the middle. Take this, we're going to place that down, give that a little squish, middle. So we're just going to keep working around building these up. Okay, so again, I'm not doing anything too technical, I'm just pulling those petals towards me and then sticking them down flat. Like I say, what I like to do is build them up like this. Then when they've actually dry, you can go back in and curl your petals a little bit more, pull them up and give them that little bit more dimension. I think when you try and do it when you're gluing that still wet, it doesn't hold the shape as well. Whereas if you do it when it, it, the glue's dried, it's going to work so much better for you. Okay, so we're going to pull this round like so. Gonna pinch the centre, pull up a glue gel on the back, and then it's gonna go down into there. Then we're gonna do the final one here. Again, just curling the petals, pulling them up towards me, blob of glue gel in the middle. What we're doing isn't difficult at all, it is so so easy to do. Okay, so I'm going to work round again, just pulling these petals up towards the centre like so. I 
just a lot of glue gel into the middle and then just sticking this acetate down and I do tend to find that glue gel is the best thing for sticking down your acetate as well to be honest um, I've tried like the glue gun and things like that and I find the glue gun's great for a little while but it tends to like ping off so I personally much prefer using the 3D glue gel okay so what we're going to do now is we're going to go in just get rid of the glue on my fingers there right and then what we're going to do is put little dots of PVA just into the middle so this is the article of PVA dries clear glue again which we've got on the website and all I'm doing is just going in and adding tiny tiny little dots of glue okay and then we're going to use our this is our starfall glitter again we're going to sprinkle that over the top and tap away the excess so you can see how it just adds when the light hits it hopefully you can see honestly when we get in my proper craft room next door at, at, at work it's going to be so much better <laughs> you can hopefully see how the glitter really shines through there so what we're going to do now is we're going to just add more little dots of glue onto there i'm just going to cover that over so we're just going to do this on all of the flowers Sorry, I know I'm having to pull this really close and you might not be able to see as well on the camera but it's just so I can see what I can, I'm doing. i hold that up, you can see how we've just got the little dots of glue there. So we'll sprinkle that over. Tap away the excess. And we're just going to carry on building up the flowers. Like so. So we've got lots of glitter on there now. So they are looking fabulous. So challenge get glitter back into pot. Again, here, here we go. Just about. See, it just expands, doesn't it? It's everywhere. Right then. So what we're gonna do next is we're gonna take a little jewel, some jewels, just to go into the middle of the flowers. So grab this one in so i'm gonna add i'm just gonna add like a larger this is like a just a plain crystally type jewel into the middle of each of these these are our little um bling boxes as well that i'm using these are coming soon so the first one which will be all festive colors so like uh, blues greens and golds that is launching on monday okay so that's the first bling box so that's the little festive fancies one it's gorgeous as well that one really really pretty we've done it in like all the colors to match the pancetta range it's really nice so this is one of the other bling boxes that i'm using so it'll be coming a little bit later in the year i think pop that into there like so then put one more into the middle of the other one so there okay so there we go right then so what we're going to do now is i'm going to put the the lid on that glue put the pin in there i'm going to bring our mats and layers in so move those flowers over to one side actually before we do the mats and layers we're going to work out our sentiment and what we want to do so Barbara has used the, one of the new Christmas stamps launching next week on the finished sample. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use, I'm just going to use the sparkle sentiment. I was going to use the Christmas sentiment builder, but mine's going to walk about. So we'll use the sparkle one instead. So I'm going to stamp sparkle. And then what have we got? We want a Christmas one. Tis the season to sparkle. Love that. Let's go with that one. Right, so going to pop this down onto here like so it's worth just spending a little bit of time make sure you've got that nice and straight on your block which is the season two yeah hmm. this is 
season two sparkle. Yes, that looks good to me. Right, so I'm going to take my anti-static bag. Just over. This is like a leftover scrap of crystal white card. It was from my mats and layers, actually. I'm going to ink up my stamp. Getting lots of light tapping with my clear embossing ink patch. And then we're going to place this down onto our card, onto our piece of card. So let me just grab that in. And we're going to press. Again, you want firm, even pressure all over the stamp. Then we're going to lift that away, okay, and we're going to cover that with, I'm just going to use the, the plain uh, metallic silver embossing powder. So, let me just tap that on, and then we're going to heat that up. It's going to go into there. Again, if you're just starting out stamping or embossing, um, gold and silver are really, really good embossing powders to start with because it's really obvious to see when the colour starts to change. So what I'm going to do next is I'm taking in my um, oval nesting dies. Oh, honestly, I love these dies. I'm so, so pleased that we brought these out. Like we hope that everyone would love them because I was like, we need eight by eight dies. We just need them. And we hope that everyone would love them and, and you have. So that is amazing. I'm so pleased that you've all been loving these. And what we're finding is people have maybe bought one set, but then you're coming back and buying more, which is brilliant. So what we're going to do now is we're going to die cut this out. So again, I'm just using my Gemini plates. Again, I've just used my two cutting, my base plate, my plastic shim and my cutting plate on the top really need to invest in some new low tack tape don't or I just instead of being really frugal just get another piece off the roll <laughs> there we go right so I'm just going to cut that out and then I'm going to get it off Amazon okay so I'm going to run that through my Gemini again like so so you just wait for that to run through Okay, and then what we're going to do is we just work out which is the next size die up for this one. So we're going to take the next size die up in the oval as well. It's that one. And we're going to die cut that out but from the mirror card. So what I'm going to do, because I'm really frugal, is I'm going to take my oval from the centre of one of my other mirror mats. Okay, so basically we're going to gut it from the middle. So... We're going to pop that die just in the middle, like so. We're going to grab a little bit of low tack tape. Now, because I'm cutting on something quite large, I'm going to have to use my A4 die cutting plates. Okay, so I'm going to take that into the middle there. And then I'm going to use my plate. So again, I just use my base plate, my plastic shim, and then my cutting plate on the top. And then we're going to run that through on the sheet. like so, so we just wait for that to run through and we'll grab that and out of the other side okay, so we've got our oval mash and we've also got our square mash so that's all nicely sorted for our mirror card and I always like to make sure as well when I'm finished with these the dies, I've just thrown one on the floor there I always like to put them back on my magnetic sheet just to make sure that I keep them all nicely together and they're nicely stored. And then I just keep them in the little packaging that they came in. I basically just cut the top off. And just slide in like so, and that's all good to go. Okay, then. So, what we're going to do now is we're going to start and build our mats and layers up for our actual card. So, I've got a card blank here. So, we're going to start off by taking our lovely foiled sheet this is from that gorgeous geometric christmas paper pad which i know you've all been loving it's such a useful one and it just works so so well with everything so a little bit of glue just on the back i'm just using kalal all purpose 
today, so I'm going to stick that down. It's going to go flat onto our base card. Okay, like so, and then we're going to take our foam pads in the brand new box. This one here, okay, and we're going to take some of these. And we're going to start and build up our mats and layers. So I'm going to pop this under here. So just a few foam pads just around the edges. And I would probably pop one in the middle as well, but we'll do that once we've stuck it onto the card. We're having a, a hole in the middle. So take that away. It's going to go down to the centre. Again, I'm so sorry, I'm working on such a weird angle that I'm really hoping that you can kind of see what I'm doing. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to pop this onto here and I apologise now but my mats and layers aren't all that straight. Okay, then we're going to pop our crystal white layer on that we edged a little bit earlier with that glass slipper glitter. That's going to go down onto there. Like so, so you can see how that's starting to come together now. Okay, and we're going to add some more foam pads onto the back of here. So I'll just work around adding these on. Okay, and then we're going to take the backs off of these. And that's going to get stuck onto our card blanks. So that's going, oops, it's going on my pads. Glue's not quite dry underneath there, so it's just moving around a little bit okay and then we've got our gorgeous stamped layer that we've got here and we're going to pop that on with some foam pads as well just grab some more pads just give me a couple of seconds and they're almost there pads onto there and then we'll just take the backs off I always like to just kind of chuck them into the bin as I go as well with the backs that's what I tend to do when I'm uh, <laughs> when I'm crafting by myself in my crafting room okay that one is going onto there like so so you can see how that's starting to come nicely together now we're going to take our sentiment and we're going to pop some form onto the back of these two Matt and layer them together and that's going to go into the middle okay so we're going to pop the foam pads under here but if you're asking about the foam pads i can see you're in the comments and um, we'll be sending an email out when these are in stock okay they're not in stock yet and um, but once they are we'll send an email out so just make sure that you're on the um on the mailing list and then you'll get an email okay so that's going to go onto there and then we're going to peel the backs off here and pop our sentiment down in the middle there. Okay. So you can see how that's really starting to come nicely together now. And to be honest, if you wanted to, you could like add a bow on there and that could be a card in its own right. It looks really lovely like this. But we're going to start to add these flowers on now. So we're going to pop those two there. And those two down there like so so you can see how this starts to come together okay so we're going to add a blob of glue i'm just using the 3d glue gel again onto the backs of the flowers okay like so and then we want our sprigs and twigs stamp and oh, I'll we'll put sprigs and twigs up here. Well, that's useful. I'll put the dies back in the packets and not the stamp. Right, so what I would then do is to finish this card off, I would just stamp some of the little sprigs and twigs stamps and dies from this set. I'd just stamp some of those onto heat resistant acetate heat them up 
and then pop a little bit of diamante sparkle glitter on and that would then be your finished project okay so that is your finished card from the stamp along today so i really hope you've enjoyed today's stamp along i am so sorry that we've had a few technical issues today hopefully we'll have them resolved for the next um facebook live so the next facebook live will be on monday at 2 p.m on the chloe's creative cards facebook page where we'll be having a little sneak peek at the brand new poncetta products that we've been sneak peeking on the page um, so that Facebook Live will be at 2pm on Monday and then the products will go live on Wednesday on uh, Monday night on the website, sorry. So keep an eye out on your emails because we'll be sending an email out with all of the details. And then I'll also be back for another Facebook Live on Wednesday next week at the usual time of 2pm. And we'll do a bit of a craft session where we just I give you loads of ideas as to how to use the new Ponsetta range. Then we'll be back to normal stamp alongs after that. So I really hope that you have enjoyed today's stamp along. It's been so lovely of you all to join me so thank you all so much and i will see you on monday at 2 p.m